Okay, hello everyone, and uh, a very warm welcome to all of you in uh, my class, uh, which is uh, basically the course of uh, ACCA F2, and it's also called MA, and it stands for Management Accounting. Okay, now just to introduce myself, uh, my name is uh, Ahmed Shafi. Okay, and I am from Karachi, Pakistan and I'm associated with Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy, okay, as an executive director. And Mirchawala's is, uh, alhamdulillah, the most trusted brand in online education in the last uh, few years, okay. I teach ACCA MA, that's uh, management accounting. Then I teach ACCA PM, performance management. Then I teach ACCA FM, financial management, AA, audit and assurance, and finally AFM, advanced financial management, okay? I have uh, teaching experience of more than 15 years and numerous of my students have secured nationwide and worldwide place winners in almost every attempt as just before the class you can see the screen the subjects i offer and the worldwide and nationwide positions are scored by my students okay so without uh, wasting any of the further time let's just formally start acca f2 management accounting okay now in today's session i will give you a brief introduction about this paper uh, regards to what this paper is exactly all about now management accounting is in many languages also called cost accounting, okay? Management accounting in many languages is also called cost accounting. It's a somewhat interchangeable, you call management accounting, cost accounting. And in this syllabus, you have everything to do with costs, right? The paper is of cost accounting. So whatever you have to do, that relates to costs. Okay, cost control, cost reduction, cost planning, budgeting, everything is included in the syllabus. Okay, and once you complete the syllabus, obviously you have to give the exam of this uh, particular paper of this cost accounting or management accounting. So let me tell you what the paper pattern is. Okay, now when you will be giving the exam of this management accounting paper, the paper is based on two sections, section A and section B. Okay, now when you talk about section A, that's worth 70 marks. Okay, and uh, for testing the 70 marks, you will face 35 short questions commonly regarded as MCQs or fill in the blank question, whatever. And every question will be off. two months each, okay? So 35 MCQs and every MCQ is off, two months each, it becomes 70, okay? As far as the second section, section B is concerned, the worth of section B is 30 marks, okay? Now in section B, you got three long questions, which are called MTQs, or which are called OTQs. MTQ stands for multi-task questions. OTQ stands for objective type questions. Okay. And every question has a worth of 10 marks each. Okay. So if you're getting three long questions, MTQs or OTQs, and each OTQ is three and mark, 10 marks each, it becomes 30. Now, what exactly is this uh, OTQ or MTQ? Now, long question doesn't mean you have to type anything or perform calculations on a drafted sheet. No, 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 nothing like that. It's just a small case study of uh, 10, 15 lines, two, three paragraphs, small case study. And from that case study, there are five short questions of two, two marks each, most likely MCQs, extracted from that scenario. So that basically five short questions of two, two marks each, 10 marks are linked to that case. That's why they're called objective type or multi-task questions, okay? So 70 marks section A, 35 MCQs of two marks each, and three long questions, 10, 10 marks, K 
case study. And for every case study, you have to solve five requirements of two, two marks each. This makes uh, approximately uh, 30 marks. And 50% is the passing marks. To pass the exam, you must uh, score 50. However, taking our course, and if you follow our guidelines, 50 is not a good score. You must score above 70, okay? This is the paper pattern. If you want to quickly take uh, some notings, you can do it. Okay, now what I will do next that obviously before starting any course, you must know that what exactly is the course outline, what are you going to study. So I will quickly jot down the course outline of this paper, then I will explain you the course content so that you know that the paper you are studying has how many aspects okay.
Okay, so this is the, the long course outline. Once you copy, I will start discussing it. Okay, so the course outline is that uh, your syllabus or course is broken into six sections. Now, obviously these sections are distributed by me. Maybe you will open the Kaplan study text, you won't see this section distribution. You open the BPP study text, you don't see this section distribution, okay? Now, it doesn't matter that whether Kaplan has broken them into sections or not, BPP has broken them into five sections and I'm saying six sections. The important thing is that all the topics and chapters mentioned have to be covered. Either we say that uh, it's uh, Kaplan approach, either we say it's PPP approach, either we say it's any other text approach, doesn't matter. What matters is that all topics mentioned here, all chapters mentioned here have to be covered, okay? So section A is basic second section. 
which will give you chapters like accounting for management, uh, who is management, what are management, sources of data, how do you capture data, how to present information, cost classification and cost behavior. Okay. Section B will teach you how to forecast things, predict things, and summarizing and analyzing data. You know, data is uh, something too much. So how to summarize it, that will be explained by section B. Section C seems to be a long section, how to handle materials of the organization, workforce, labor of the organization, other expenses, overheads of the organization, two costing techniques, absorption, marginal costing, then process costing, then joint and byproducts, job bad service costing, and then alternative costing principles. So these are eight topics approximately in section C. Part D, section D is all about budgeting, how to make budgets, budgeting, the process of budgeting, how to make budgets work and investment appraisal that whenever you are going to invest your money anywhere, how to appraise or evaluate that, okay? Section E is standard costing and variances. You will discuss two types of variances here, cost variance and sales variance, okay? And section F is all about target setting and evaluation of financial and non-financial performance, okay? So this is what your course outline looks like, which we will complete over the span of our syllabus, okay? Now, usually the MTQ comes from three MTQs. Usually, it's not written somewhere, usually. One MTQ from budgeting, one MTQ from variances, and one MTQ from performance measurement. Remember the three MTQs of section B of 10, 10 marks. One comes from usually section E, variances, one comes from section F, target setting, and one comes from section D, budgeting, okay? MCQs can come from across the syllabus, 35 MCQs can be spread across the syllabus, okay? Now, how will we study? The usual pattern of our study is that uh, we will start firstly through section A, okay? We will start firstly through section A. And once we complete section A, then we will be moving towards any of the section. Maybe I will move towards section C, maybe I will move towards section B, maybe I will move to section D. So that's not a problem. Obviously till the end, all areas will be covered, but we will start with section A, okay? So in section A, the first topic we are gonna start is these two, cost classification and cost behavior. And once we are done with cost classification and cost behavior, then we will do the remaining three aspects. All these are theoretical areas. So we'll discuss all three. Firstly, we are starting with cost classification and cost behavior, okay? You need to copy some stuff which I'm sharing on the screen. Before starting this section, I forgot to tell you one thing. You need to use study text of either BPP or Kaplan. You can use any study text of the publisher, either BPP or Kaplan. And you have to use the revision kits of BPP and Kaplan. I did not say or Kaplan. The revision kits have to be taken of both BPP and Kaplan because both have some very good questions. Although we will solve the revision kits uh, 60, 65% between the classes as well. But you need to take both revision kits and the study text will be either take BPP or Kaplan, doesn't matter, okay? And together with that, there will be a notes file which I will share with you on email, okay? So these are the three study materials that we are using. The notes file, which I will send you an email. Study text, either use BPP or Kaplan, revision kits both, PPP as well as Kaplan. So if we do all these things before going in the exam, how to prepare, that will be taught in the last class, but this is the study material which you need to keep. Okay, so let's start topic number one, section A. Please note that what uh, study material you will be needing, the notes file, I will email it to you, okay? And uh, Study text either take BPP or Kaplan and the revision kit both. Okay, so we're starting section A, topic number one cost classification, cost behavior.
Okay, note this, then I will start explaining. We're starting section A, topic number one, cost classification and cost behavior. Okay, now if you're starting cost accounting paper, right? This is the cost accounting management accounting paper and you're starting topic number one, cost classification, cost behavior. So whenever you are starting a cost accounting paper, the first information which must be in your mind is, what is cost, right? Like someone is studying mathematics, he must know what is mathematics. Someone is studying financials, he must know what is financial. So if someone is studying economics, he must know what is economics. So. If you're studying cost accounting, the first thing you must know is what cost is, okay? Now, how do we define cost? Any expenditure incurred in making a product is called cost. That is outflow in making a product. Remember, whenever we make a product, the product is not made for free. There is some outflow. There is some expenditure incurred in making the product that is called cost. Like for example, consider a bakery owner. He's making a cake. Do you think the cake would be made for free? No. He will incur some expenditure in making that cake. That is called cool cost. Like if he spends dollar five on making that product, dollar five is the cost. Consider a pizza shop. Uh, a shop uh, makes pizzas and sells to customers. So if you are making a pizza, does it get manufactured for free? No. There is some expenditure incurred in making a pizza. That is called cost. Like let's suppose you spend $20 in making a pizza. That is outflow, that is cost. Go at a larger scale, Toyota company making cars. Is the car manufactured for free? No. They incur some expenditure in making that car. Outflow in making that car, that is cost. Let's suppose they spend 10,000 US dollars in making that car, that is cost. Okay, so any expenditure incurred in making a product is called cost. A person is constructing his house. So when he makes the house, it's not for free. There is some expenditure in constructing that house that is called cost, okay? So any expenditure incurred in making a product is called cost. And after incurring cost, we add profit to get price. Like cost, add profit is price. For example, consider a bakery owner, which I gave you the first example. He incurred $1.5 in making the cake, that's cost. Dollar five was incurred in making the cake, that's cost. Will he sell the cake for dollar five? No. Dollar five was incurred in making the cake, that's cost. He will add some profit. Let's suppose dollar three will profit. What will be selling price? Dollar eight. Okay. Let's suppose a pizza shop owner spent dollar twenty in making a pizza, that's cost. Will he sell the pizza for dollar twenty? No. You will add some profit, let's suppose $5. So price is 25. If you spend $20 in making a pizza and you sell it for 20, you won't earn anything. Okay. Similarly, Toyota company spends $10,000 in making a Toyota car. They won't sell it for 10,000. They will add some profit, let's suppose 2,000. The price becomes 12,000. Okay. 
So any expenditure incurred in making a product is called cost. Okay, any outflow incurred in making a product is called cost. After incurring cost, the company adds profit to get price. Cost plus profit is price. I gave you some examples that let's suppose a cake uh, shop makes a cake. So cake is in made for free. They spend dollar five in making a cake. That's cost. Even if you make anything in your own home, it costs money. So whatever you spend incur to make a product that's cost, then we add profit to get price. Okay, now an interesting thing. This is a very good area. No matter whatever product you make, no matter whatever product you make, obviously you spend money on making that product, that's cost. The cost of that product is always made up of three elements. No matter whatever product you make, cost of that product is always made of three elements because there are only three elements of cost in real world. You won't be able to find a fourth element that challenge you, okay? No matter whatever product you make, the product isn't made for free, right? We incur some money in making that product. That is called cost, okay? Now, no matter whichever product you select, the cost of that product will be made up of three things. Three elements, material, labor, and expense, okay? Material basically means items used in making product. Material basically means items used in making product, okay? Labor commonly refers to workforce, okay? And there are some expenditures in making a product which can neither be said material nor labor. They are called expenses. Let me explain it to you. Whenever you make a product, you make cake, you make car, you make pizza, you make a house, it costs money. There is some expenditure in that. that is called cost, okay? Now, no matter whichever product you make, the cost will always be made up of three elements because there are three elements of cost. There is no fourth element of cost. The three elements are material, labor, and expense. Three elements are material, labor, and expense okay items used in making a product is material now obviously let me explain you about material let's suppose you have a wooden table in front of you when you made that wooden table was it for free no i didn't cut some cost expenditure that is cost now how was that cost made up of three things is uh, this uh, wooden table made of something yes wood that's material item used in making Okay, was some workers involved? Yes, did you pay to workers? Yes, labor. And in making table, do you think some electricity and stuff like that came? Yes. So whatever wood was used, we call it material. Whatever labor did, we call it labor. Workers did, we call it labor, okay? But electricity expense came. So can you say electricity is my material? No. Can you say electricity is my labor? No. So anything which is neither material nor labor is called expense. So see, the wooden table was made for, let's suppose dollar hundred. This dollar hundred was made up of three things. Wood, material, workers worked, labor, we paid them, we paid for wood. And there was some expenditure which was neither material nor labor, that's expense. Another example, let's suppose a bakery owner is making cakes. Let's suppose a bakery owner is making cake. Obviously, when he will make cake, the cake won't be made for free. Obviously, when he's making cake, the cake will not be made for free. It will incur some money. That is cost. It will incur some money. That is cost. So let's suppose the cake was made for $1.05. Expenditure incurred in making cake, $1.05 is the cost. 
Now this dollar five expenditure was incurred in making the cake that's cost. It will always be made up of three things. Were some items used in making cake? Yes. Flour, eggs, butter, sugar. Some items were used in making cake. That is called material. Was some worker involved in making cake? Yes, labor. Did making of cake require the consumption of some electricity or gas? Yes. So you cannot say electricity or gas is my material. No, they're not items used. You cannot say they are my workers. They're not your labor. You can call them expense. Now challenge, find a fourth item. You can't. Because whenever a product is made, the cost is always made up of three things. Material, item use, labor, workers, and any other thing, expense. Go to the second example. Go to the second example. The second example I gave you was of pizza. I was talking to you about a pizza shop. Let's suppose a pizza shop makes pizzas. When they will make a pizza, the pizza won't be made for free. It will cost some money. Let's suppose $1.20 was spent on making the pizza that's cost. This $1.20 cost is made up of three things because there are three elements of cost. Are there some items used in making pizza? Yes, money was spent there. Material like cheese, like dough, like ketchup. Okay, was some worker involved in making pizza? Yes, he was paid some money. That's labor. And electricity, gas, that is neither material nor labor expense. Because when you spend dollar twenty in making that pizza, the dollar twenty, how was it spent on where it was sent? Some dollar twenty was spent on items, material, some was spent on labor workers, and any other than that, expense. Okay. Sir, Let's square a big level. Car, Toyota company was making a car. Okay, let's suppose when they will make a car, when they will make a car, obviously the car won't be made for free. It will cost some money, right? The car won't be made for free. It will cost some money. Let's suppose the car was made for $10,000. So when the car was made for $10,000, this was the uh, expenditure incurred in making a car that's cost. So this 10,000 was the cost. It's definitely made up of three things because three items are the elements of cost. Does there involve some items used in making car? Yes, aluminum, steel, fiber, that's material. Were there some workers involved? Yes, labor, electricity, etc. expense. Okay, this is not about only the examples I quoted. You can check anywhere. Let's suppose a house was constructed. Was the house constructed for free? No. Let's suppose there was some money spent on house construction, 20,000 USD. That's cost, expenditure incurred in making a product, that's cost. This cost was always made of three things. There were three items on which this money was spent. Were there some items used in making the house? Yes, cement, steel, fiber, material. Were there some workers involved? Were they paid? Yes, labor. Was there some any other thing? Yes, transportation, electricity. You cannot say it's your material. You cannot say it's your labor. So any other thing is called expense. So remember, whenever you make a product, it's not made for free. There's always some expenditure incurred in making a product and that is called loss, okay? And you can also see, let's suppose uh, you went to a burger shop. The burger shop owner makes burgers. The burgers aren't made for free. He incurs some expenditure, that's cost, okay? Let's suppose on making the burger, he spent $1.10, that's cost. That $1.10 will always be spent on three things. Are there some items used in making the burger? Yes, beef, chicken, bread, that's material. Are there some workers involved? Yes, rent, electricity, gas, neither material nor labor expense. So whenever you make a product, it's always made up of three things, material, labor, and so in today's class, we just discussed the course outline, okay? And I told you two basic things. What is cost? Any expenditure incurred, any outflow incurred in making a product is cost, okay? We add profit in that cost to get price, okay? And whenever you spend money on anything that's cost, it's always made up of three things, material, item use, labor, workers, and any other 
that's neither material nor labor tasks. Okay, signing off for today. We will continue this topic in the next class. Take care.